Hey, it's Ben here, and as I'm sure lots of people are doing today, we're sitting down to the new version of Final Cut Pro, which has some really exciting new updates. There's timeline scrolling, which has been a big ask from the Final Cut Pro community for a long time. I'm really excited to explore these uh, collapsed storylines, which means you can collapse multiple layers into a storyline rather than just a single layer of connected storyline clips. So that's going to be an exciting one to play with. I'm interested to see how the, the layers work and how they hold up when you're editing and sliding things around. I think one of the most exciting things for me always when there's a software update is the Final Cut Pro looks the same. That means that all the resources, things like the tutorials that I've been creating over the, the past years will still be valid for those working with Final Cut Pro in this version. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is the max that Final Cut Pro won't work with. So in order to see that, we're going to have to look at the complete feature list and also the system requirements as well. There's a couple of little details in here that you'll want to know before you get too excited about upgrading. So obviously we've got the list of the automatic timeline scrolling, um, some of the accelerated exports, which will be useful for those exporting in the H.264 or HEVC export formats. And then if we scroll all the way down, the important bits, the Final Cut Pro tech specs web page. So if we jump in here, then you can see that you need Mac OS 30.5 or later, eight gigabytes of RAM, and obviously you'll need to upgrade before Final Cut Pro will even allow you to upgrade. Um, and this metal capable graphics card for Intel based Macs. I'm working on a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro here. And if we come up to Apple menu and then about this Mac, then we can jump into more info. And in here, we're going to scroll all the way down and come to the system report. So we're going to scan down and in here we're looking for graphics and displays. And in here you'll get a list of all the kind of graphics cards details. And you can see that this particular MacBook Pro has Metal 3 installed, which is what is required for Final Cut Pro 10.7 to run. The other thing that's required as well is Mac OS 13.5 or later. And if we come across here, you can see a list of the Macs that will allow 13.5 or later, so Mac OS Ventura. And so what we're really looking for is 2017 and later MacBook Pros, 2018 and later MacBook Airs, and then for iMacs, 2017 and later for the iMac Pro, which doesn't exist anymore, and then 2017 and later for the iMac. So if you have a Mac from around 2017 or before, you'll really want to double check your setup and settings to see if you need to upgrade your, your Mac as well. The other piece that's mentioned here that's really important as well is that more than 16 gigabytes of RAM was recommended for third-party effects and plugins. So if you're using a lot of third-party effects from companies like FX Factory or creators like Brett FX, then you'll need to make sure that you've got higher than eight gigabyte of RAM. So most Macs that you buy in store, particularly the MacBook Pros, will mostly have the eight gigabyte of RAM installed if you're wanting to buy a Mac on the day. If you do want to upgrade to 16 or 32 gigabytes or some of the new variations that Apple has introduced, such as 18 gigabytes, then you'll need to make sure that you order that online for pickup in store or order it online for delivery. And for the disk space, most people will be able to make 5.8 gigabytes of disk space to actually install Final Cut Pro 10.7. But this is worth noting, some features of Final Cut Pro 10.7 will require a Mac with Apple Silicon. I'm not sure what those features are quite yet. I haven't had a, a good kind of play around only having installed it today, but definitely drop a comment below if you find features that aren't available with an Intel based Mac. I'd be interested to know as I'm still working on Intel based Mac for the moment. Another thing worth noting is that if you are thinking that you do need all the features of Final Cut Pro 10.7, then Apple has just released the new M3 Macs. So either MacBook Pro or the iMac, these look super cool. And I've heard really good things about the speed of the M3 and M3 Max MacBook Pros. So definitely worth taking a look at those and seeing if it's time to upgrade your Mac for the new Final Cut Pro 10.7. The other great thing about Final Cut Pro 10.7 is it's a free upgrade. So really you're just upgrading your hardware if you do need to install and upgrade Final Cut Pro. Please do leave any comments and questions and thoughts in the comments below. I'm going to be exploring Final Cut Pro 10.7 over the next few days and look forward to discovering and sharing some of the, the new updates and the new features that are available there. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.